Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make an attack function. Now this is useful if you're playing a game where you have other characters or monsters that may attack you and take off health points off your player. So again this would be useful if you wanted to end a game for example if the player's health drops below zero so it can make our game more playable and more realistic. So on this first line you'll notice I've made a health variable. Remember a variable is just a box in memory where we're going to store in this case the value of 20 for the player's health. Don't forget you need the equal sign so that this amount will get stored in this variable called health. Next I've just made up a health value for a troll. Uh, we won't use that in this demo, but we will use it in the next tutorial. So I've got a gain a value of 10. I've got the equal sign, which will then basically store this value of 10 into the variable, the box in memory. I've called troll health. Now, finally, I've made a third variable, which I'm calling troll attack, and I've given that a value of 2. And again, don't forget the equal sign. Now this troll attack variable, I'm going to use that as that's the amount of damage or the amount of health you'll lose whenever you're attacked by this troll. Okay, next stage of the game is to make an attack function. Now we're making this the same way we have before, so we use def, which is short for define, must have a space, and I'm naming it. You can choose your own name, but it seem sensible to call it attack as that's what this is going to be doing. Again you must have the open and close brackets and you must have the colon. Now as I've mentioned before when you make a function all of this has to be indented that is there needs to be some white space from the edge of the screen. Now this is the same as one tab. You've got the tab key on the left hand side of your keyboard and it's normally found just above the caps lock key towards the top of the keyboard. Okay, But if you remember to put the colon and then with your cursor here hit enter you'll automatically get the correct amount of indentation. Now let's take that back. One thing to remember these values I've got here are only part of this function because they're indented all on the same level. Look, see if I move this down it's all on the same level. They must all be on the same level, same amount of indentation, same amount of space from the edge of the screen to be part of this function. That's very important. Okay, here's something you may, may not have seen before. I'm using a word called global. Now, basically, all this means is I'm telling my function that I want these values to be available anywhere in my game. So I can use them in this function, I can use it outside of a function, I can use it anywhere. So I've set the values here at the top, and then within this function, I've put these three lines of code saying that they're global variables. In other words, the values can be used anywhere in the program. You must have these in here for this to work correctly. So they're very important. Now finally, this line of code. It's not as complicated as it looks. Let's look at the right hand side of it first. So I've got health, which we have a value of 20 stored in, minus whatever value is stored in troll attack, which in our case, as you can see here, is 2. Now this equals health bit, what that's basically doing, it's saying go ahead, take away whatever's stored in troll attack from the health value and then save that back into the health value again. So what will happen when I run this, once this function is called, it will say, hey, okay, what's the troll attack value? Well, we can see it's 2. What's the health value at the moment? Oh, we can see it's 20 to start with. And then the equals health bit here will store the new value back into the health value. So it will overwrite whatever was in there before. So if we call this function once, no prizes for guessing, 20 goes down by 2 to the new value stored in here would be 18. Okay, now finally, I'm going to use this code within my start room function. So 
So I've made a starter in function. You should already have one of these. If you don't, just go ahead and make one. And I'm printing a line here. No real surprise, just a print line. You're in a dark cave, suddenly a troll attacks you. Now this here calls the attack function. So it's a, the word attack, as you can see, it's exactly the same as it is here, except we don't have a colon after it this time. It's just attack, open bracket, close bracket. And this kind of makes like a telephone call. It says, hey, Mr. Attack function up here, do this code. So what will happen when the code gets to this point, it will jump to this point and just work through here, do everything you ask it to do within this function and then the code will come back to this point here after running all the code in the attack function. Now some of you have done this, some of you haven't, but we can join some text with a variable and then some more text. Now to do this we put it in speech marks here and here, then we put a comma, you must have the comma in, then we put the name of the variable that we wish to print. Then we put another comma, must have this comma here as well. It kind of joins it all together. And then we've opened the speech marks, put some text in, and closed the speech marks. Okay? Now, just to show you how this works again, I've put another print line to say you're being attacked by the, attacked by the troll again. Oh dear, this player's not having a good day. And I've called the attack function again. And again, this is the same line again, telling you how many health points you've got left. Okay, I'll run this in just a moment. But finally, don't forget, a function will not run. It will, won't work unless you tell it to do so. So you must have a call to the first function you want to run down here. And this is not indented. This is right on the edge of the screen. So when I run this code, it's going to come down to this point. Then it's going to jump to here, come down here, it will see this attack call here, jump back to here, and come back to here again. Okay, That's what's going to happen in the code. But let's see it actually in practice. So I'm going to press F5, click OK to save it, and here we have it. You're in a dark cave, suddenly a troll attacks you, you have 18 points left, look. So the attack function has worked, it's taken two away from our health value and printed how many health points you have left. The troll attacks again, poor player, and now you have 16 points left because it's 18 has been stored in here, another 2 has been taken off and that value goes down to 16. So there you have it, a quick and easy function to make and the beauty of this is once you've made your attack function the code is written, you don't have to write anymore because you can just write this one little line of code and use it again and again and again in your program whenever you want a player to be attacked by this particular character, a troll in this case, but it can be anything you want. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, have a go. See if you can run the code like it is here first. So I'd suggest making a new window and just trying this code first. And then once you've done that, try and incorporate it, try and put it into your game. Okay, have fun. See you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.